Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. I'm Jim, welcome to my channel. Um, so this week we're back on inlays and I hope to stay on inlays for a while. Um, I know that it's a popular thing, it's just that I've had to get some roughing done and so that's why I had to switch that for a week or two. So anyway, we're back. And this week I'm gonna take this maple bowl. Now it's got cracks along here, there's voids along here, there's cracks again along here, and on the bottom, there's actually some rotten spots as well. Now I've gone ahead and cleaned this out with a, uh, a drill with a brush. That's why it's, you can see kind of maybe some marks in there. Anyway, I think what we're gonna do is use soapstone and branches as the inlay on this one. And I'll start on the bottom before I put the glue block on and with hot melt glue. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it, and um, and we'll do some branch inlays on the ends, on each side, and I'm not I'm not sure what we'll do here, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So that's this week's video. Hopefully, uh, you can gain something from this, and you can save some of the bowls that are in your inventory that have cracks like this or big ugly voids like this as well. So anyway, uh, let's get this inlaid on the bottom. Uh, we'll let it set up and then we'll get a glue block on it and then we'll get it on the lathe. Okay, so um, before we put the glue block on the bottom of this, I want to put this inlay in here. It's kind of kind of backwards in the way I do it, but um, it's a little uneven in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. So what I've taken is soapstone and kind of bashed it up into a powder and run it through a sieve like this. And then that way, you haven't got big chunks of uh, material in there. It kind of makes it look a little more speckled, if you will. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this, kind of put it in the bottom to even the bottom before I put the branches in. And then that way, uh, if we do come through it, um, you're going to hit some soapstone. There, something like that. Now you've got, oh, probably three sixteenths of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch or maybe even more than that. So I'll be able to put these branches in here, set them with the uh, thin CA glue. And when you do this, of course, you need the thin CA glue and some sort of an accelerator. So let's saturate this. I think what I'll do right now is I'll try and get these branches in here. Again, there's no right way or wrong way for these branches to go in. It's just however you want them to go in. I do try and keep them upright. So there. Now, I'll hit these with the glue again. And remember, you've got to use the thin stuff. Now, I don't want them to move on me while I'm putting soapstone around them. So I'll use the accelerator. So that should lock them in place. Then I'll fill in all around of these all around these branches. And then once this is once this inlay has cured, I'll grind these off with a, with an angle grinder. And um, then I'll put the glue block on. Now I've got a mat down here and it's, it's more or less a, a recovery mat so that I can knock off the excess inlay material. 
And if you knock on the bowl, it'll also help seat, seat the material. And again, at this stage, I'm not concerned about glue runs or anything like that, because this is all going to be trimmed away once it's mounted back on the lathe. And then again, saturate it with the glue. And what I'm going to do is just fill in on the edge here. I need to make kind of a, a dam to keep the glue from... I don't know if you can see that smoke or not, but that's the CA glue curing. And of course it's very aggressive on your lungs, so make sure you use it in a well ventilated area. And I'm going to put probably more branches along here, but I'm not too concerned about doing that right now. I'm just concerned about uh, getting the glue block on there and getting this mounted on the lathe and then trimming it up to see what we're actually dealing with. And I can grind all this all out of here if I wish and then do more uh, branching lace with the soapstone down along here. And at this stage, I don't really even care uh, if this is all completely filled in because uh, the, the bottoms of the bowls are always finished the way I do it, are finished differently from, um, I don't use a chuck to hold it, I use a glue block, right? So I do the inside, the outside of the bowl completely, and then cut it off and finish the, the bases separately. But there's such a big void here that I was worried about the glue block adhering to the bottom of the bowl properly. So there, I'll just sprinkle some more soapstone, some low areas here. And that'll be it. I'll hit this again with some more glue. And when this sets up, I'll put the glue block on the bottom. There, that's step one. Okay, so the inlay is in there now and you know it's not done there's probably some voids and stuff in there but i'm not really concerned about that i just wanted some mass in there for my glue block to uh, be glued to so yeah we're already on the road to recovery as you can see it's already starting to look nice it's okay again this electric frying pan hot melt glue in it This is a waste block. As you can see, it's got grooves in it. Uh, I think the grooves give better adhesion because the glue gets down in there. And then just center it up on the bowl. Now, when I do my turnings, I leave them pretty thick. And the reason, one of the reasons for that is because of this method. So just center it up best you can. And if you've left the correct amount of um, thickness in the bowl, uh, when we're on the shelf to dry, you should have lots of room to turn away this material, all this bad stuff. And then um, anyway, we'll, after this is on here, we can trim this all up and then we'll get a look at all these bad areas and see what's going on and see what we're gonna do. So that's next.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and did one side already, and this is ready for the inlay. Now, I've got this marked out, and this is just a, a rough idea as to what, uh, where I'm gonna cut. And what I'll do is, if you don't have a, um, a sawzall, you can use a coping saw. Uh, it's just gonna take longer to do. The blade's done on this, or else I'd actually use that. Um, so yeah, here's my sawzall. It's got a fairly fine blade on it. And all I'm gonna do with that is just go straight in and just basically cut this bulk of this wood out. Once that's out, I'll either use a tool like this. This is a Typhoon bit. And it actually is quite aggressive and will work quite well. Or this is a drum that's got uh, little burrs on it too. I'll put the description down below for both of these. Anyway, I'll just clean this all up. And on the back side, I'll have to clean out that little area too. And I'll probably just use this Typhoon bit as well. And then we'll get to the inlay. There, that's the bulk of it. Um, we'll go back at it with the uh, the other burrs and get this cleaned up. Okay, so everything has been cleaned out to the point that now we can get the branches. So we're gonna put the branches in first. And this is a maple bowl and I'm gonna use maple branches. Um, make sure that these are dry, dry, dry. I kiln dry mine. And then um, if you don't, when you put these in here in the soapstone around them, if they're green or have some moisture in them and they go into a dry environment, they're gonna shrink and fall out. So anyway, we're just going to set these branches in here and then um, hit them with CA glue to hold them in place and then we'll grind them off on the lathe and then we'll do the, uh, the soapstone in them. You know, and it doesn't really matter, it's whatever you want. Lay them in, in the pattern that you like. There's really no right or wrong. The one thing to be careful of is make sure that the branches come out past the edge and are in past the edge on the inside as well. For a lot of these uh, on the bottom need quite long branches. Anyway, I just get a few in place and then hit it with the CA glue just to hold them in place and keep building them up. There's the accelerator. That'll just kind of hold them in place so that you can pick the bowl up and move it around and get these in there.
Okay, so I wasn't going to keep you around for all of that. And yes, it's a finicky thing to do. So I don't know how many branches there are, but there's a lot. And like I said, you can use bigger branches and then fill it in with a soapstone. These are small little branches, which kind of give a real neat effect as well. So anyway, let's grind these off. Right, so now put some duct tape on the outside. Any cheap old duct tape will do. This is also covered in the uh, maple bowl with burnt rim with uh, branches and brass shavings. I cover this extensively in that video as well. So make sure you check that out. So yeah, these are just a little proud of the surface. And this is just to hold the material in place when we hit it with the glue. This is a little different situation. I think I'll have to fill these areas first and then put tape on the outside. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to figure that out as we go. Okay, so we're over here at the inlay table. Um, I'm going to leave this and this like soapstone, uh, just straight soapstone, sorry. And that will mimic what's going on here on each side of this so that'll be good and of course we're just going to take the soapstone it's been all kind of crushed up now i like to work at the top and what this will act as is is a dam so up there And then just kind of wrap on the bowl, try and knock the material down into all the voids. Now this is going to be all trimmed back. So I mean, it's not probably real absolute crucial that it's completely filled in because a lot of it's going to get turned away. But nonetheless, we'll do that. And again, you've got to use the thin CA. If you try to use, uh, you know, medium or thick, it's in all likelihood not going to happen. So saturate it. Let it soak in for a minute. And then hit it with the accelerator. Now once that cures, we can put this now up on its side like this. Now I didn't cut off the branches inside. Uh, it's a little difficult to do. If you tried to turn them away, uh, all you're going to end up doing is breaking them off and then it's going to look like uh, crap. So don't do that. And just simply um, put some of this glue down between the branches. Keeping in mind that you don't want to fill this right to the top of the branches because, you, I mean, you just really want the inlay material down in the bowl itself. Yeah, it's a little hard to do. Show the camera and do this at the same time. And 
And you can see down in there, there's still some areas that probably need some filling. Uh, can you see those down in there? And of course, this will give the, uh, the branches support so that when you do turn them, uh, they should cut cleanly. So again, whack the glue to her. Don't spare it. And what we'll do after this sets is I'll pull the, um, the tape off the outside and make sure that it's wicked through all the way to the other side. And if it hasn't, we'll hit it with the glue on the outside, but it probably won't reach it. It may in some spots. See the military is back at work, flying the Chinooks anyway. I don't know if you can hear that. Right. Again, accelerator. Just to be careful that it's not going to run out of the inlay. And again, same thing on the other side. And I'm assuming you can do the same thing with epoxies, resins, should say. Uh, the only thing is that um, that might be kind of may not work is the fact that this is the consistency of water, just about anyway, and um, so it flows well. And I mean, if you're using like a colored resin, I don't know if it's um, viscous enough to flow where you want it to go. But one of these days we're going to find out because I'm going to start doing some resin work. Because I'm very curious about it. And I have some ideas as to what will look good. So anyway, once this sets up, I'll leave this set overnight. Once this sets up uh, tomorrow, I will um, trim this all back and then give it another filling. And then from there, we'll see if it needs another one before we decide to, to sand it. You know, you can put in a little bit at a time and hit it with the glue if you wish. Uh, one of the problems with that is that the glue may flow to an area that um, doesn't have any soapstone and then you've got a clear see-through window. Which in itself, yeah, it's pretty cool, but um, 
that's not really what I'm going for. But I have inlays, I have done inlays like that though. So there. And also the area that you're working with, with your inlay material, make sure that it's clean. This kind of folds up and I can put it back into the container and that way it's not wasted. I mean, you can buy soapstone relatively cheap in fairly large amounts. But if you're working with something like uh, lapis lazuli that I work with, um, you know, it's considered a semi-precious stone and well, you don't want to waste it. Okay, let's take this tape off here and see what we got. And again, I'm not real concerned about uh, a little bit of glue flowing over. I mean, this is going to be all trimmed away anyway. So there. That's the big part of the inlay here, I'm trying to get that done. But as far as branch inlays is concerned, this is a pretty complex one, because don't forget, we've got it on the base here too. So what I'll we'll do here is I will kind of pack that a little bit and make a dam out of it. So yeah, we will fill this up not fill it up, but I'll get it wet and then put more soapstone on top of it, eventually making a dam in here. And then what I'll do after that, I'll put tape on the back side here and then I'll fill it from the front. So there's that. And I'll do the same thing on this side. I won't bore you with that. Okay, it's the next day. Let's see what we got. Let's trim it up. That'll give you some shots of this here in the decent light, hopefully. So as you can see, there's still some voids. So we'll fill this again, trim it back with the gouge again. We'll look at it. If there's any major uh, inlay areas that need to be done, then I'll probably fill those and then I'll go to sanding and I'll sand right up to 320. And um, do the last filling on it. But as you can see, it gives a pretty neat effect. I think the one big advantage that this has over resins is that it doesn't look plasticky. So anyway, I'm just going to go around, do all these. Um, that's really all that, uh, I don't think you need to stick around for that.
Okay, so we're all filled and trim, or sorry, filled and glued again. So I'm gonna trim this up and hopefully we'll be able to go right to sandpaper. I know I say this a lot in all my videos, but this is the best part. It's the first coat of finish going on. Now, if you're new to my channel, um, the finish that I like to use is General Finishes Salad Bowl Finish. It's a resin urethane mix. It's very durable and it will get typically three coats. I'm very generous with the first coat. I really want the wood to really draw the finish in. That will seal everything. And then uh, the other two coats that will go on will help build the shine and give it more protection. What do you think? She's a beauty. Okay, this is the second coat. Before you put the, um, the finish on, make sure that you blow it out really well with the air hose. Um, you don't want to leave any steel wheel bits behind. And um, you could use a Scotch-Brite pad, and I have in the past for a lot of my turnings. Uh, I do find that sometimes it might be a little too aggressive. So that's why I use the 4.0 steel wool. But one of the knocks on 4 old steel wool is that it has a habit of embedding itself in the grain, um, in the grains of the wood. But this here is um, maple and it's pretty well closed grain, so probably not too many concerns about this. But it certainly will do that in walnut, oak, ash. So just be careful that you really blow it out well with the air hose. And like I said earlier, this will probably take three coats. Um, we'll have to see. Sometimes you can get away with two. So it's morning. Uh, by the afternoon, hopefully I'll be able to put the third coat on. And then we'll cut this bad boy off tomorrow, finish the bottom, and finish up the video. Okay, so I did the third coat off camera. I'm um, getting ready to part get off the lathe here with the parting tool. Uh, I'll be honest with you, this is really the only time that I get nervous. Uh, so I'll part in here and I'll leave about an inch, maybe an inch and a half, and then just pop the bowl off and then finish the bottom separately. I'll probably have to do some more inlay, inlay work on the bottom of this. If you remember, there's an inlay that goes right across it. So let's get that done.
Here you go. Well, all right, what do you think of that? So I'll put some stills up at the end. And again, this is maple with maple branches and soapstone. Still got one more coat of finish to put on the foot. But you know, this process and the reason why I take out this big area is because I could have just cleaned out that crack and filled it with soapstone, but that looks like a repair. By taking this out, you give them the illusion that, you know, that you're enhancing it somehow instead of repairing it. So that's one of the reasons why I don't typically just clean out a crack and then, you know, just kind of fill it. So, um, but I mean, if you remember, this bowl was a basket case. There was a lot of things wrong with this bowl, but it just goes to show you you know, how, how you can repair these bowls and actually make them works of art. So uh, next week is going to be another inlay, so make sure you come back for that. And as always, uh, every time you hit that like button, you certainly help with my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. So until then, stay safe, take care. We'll see you next week.